The graph of a basic rational expression 1 over x. So for this little lesson, we want to look at f of x is equal to 1 over x, the function 1 over x. And we're going to graph this by just plotting some key points. OK, so behind me I have a table. We're just going to plug in some values and see what values come out. So if x is equal to negative 5, we end up with negative 1 fifth. x is negative 1, 1 over negative 1, just Cancels out to negative 1. Okay, negative 1 fifth. This one's a little bit more complicated. If we plug in negative 1 fifth, we get 1 over negative 1 fifth. This is a complex fraction, so we actually multiply by the opposite. So this is 1 over, sorry, 1 times negative 5 over 1, which turns into negative 5. We plug in 0. 1 over 0. What is 1 over 0? We can't divide by 0, so this is undefined. And then we're going to go through these same numbers without the negative sign. The numeric values are going to come out exactly the same as up here, but they'll be positive instead. So 1 over 1 fifth is just going to be 5. This is 1, and then finishing up with 1 fifth. Okay, so let's go over to a graph and plot these points. For this particular example, I'm not terribly concerned with complete accuracy but we are going to sort of get the rough idea of what this graph looks like. Okay, so negative 5, negative 1 fifth. We go out back 5 units. Negative 1 fifth is a fairly small number. Okay, negative 1, oh, why did I put it positive? It should be negative. Let's drop that down. Negative 1, negative 1 is right over here. Negative 1 fifth is pretty small number, pretty close to 0, so it's going to be just a pretty close to the x-axis, and we go down 5. Okay, plotting the same points when we're going positive. We can't plot anything when x is 0. And so we continue our pattern. If x is 1 fifth, we go up to 5, 0 0.11, and lastly the 0 0.5, 1 fifth. Okay, connecting the dots. What we end up with is a graph that comes down around like this. Kind of missed my point, but we'll get the idea of the general shape. And another piece that comes down and around like this. Okay? Not exact, but you get an idea of what this graph looks like. What you notice is we have two pieces. Okay? It's divided by the x-axis and the y-axis. And what this is actually called are called asymptotes. I'm going to write that up there because it's a pretty hard word to say and spell. So asymptotes. I don't really know why the P is in there. You don't really say it out, but it's how you spell it. So what we have here is a horizontal asymptote, which means that the graph is basically going to get very, very close to zero, but it's never actually going to touch it. So think about what happens when we put in really large numbers for x, 1,000, 1 million, things like that. We're going to get 1 over 1,000, 1 over a million, get very, very small numbers, but they're still positive numbers. They're getting closer and closer to zero. So what a horizontal asymptote is saying is the graph is going to approach it and approach it, but never actually touch it. So here we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay? By the same logic, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Okay. Again, we can plug, plug in very, very small numbers for x. 1 over a very small number turns into a very big number. And so what's going to happen is the graph is going to shoot up to infinity or shoot down to negative infinity. Okay. So that's a vertical asymptote. It's pretty easy to remember. Vertical is up and down. Horizontal is side to side. So what we've done is plotted some key points to create our graph and then talked about some language that is involved in the graph of 1 over x.